Hi YouTube, I'm back. Luckily I'm back. I know the last video that I made was pretty serious and I wanted to at least get it out that I'm not a super serious person all the time, but at that moment in my life, I had to kind of get real with all of you because that's what we do, right? We all get real with each other and this is me, my big fat fabulous life, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I had to come back because I have to be really honest. The last 72 hours of my life have been incredibly chaotic, like so chaotic to the point where I literally probably just tried to sleep it off. You know, if you've ever woken up with a really bad hangover and you try to sleep it off, that's been my life for the last 72 hours. So to start, I put a poll up on Instagram on whether or not ketosis is ketosis or it's ketosis. And I did a little bit of research and two different dictionaries say one is ketosis and the other is ketosis. I'm voting ketosis because that just seems like it makes sense. If you guys call it ketosis, I don't wanna hear about it. It's done. I've written the book and it's been logged and moved on. So ketosis, number one. So I have to talk about the last 72 hours of my life. I know that I uh, told you guys it's been kind of hectic. I know on Instagram I said that it is, my weight right now is stalled. I've been sitting at the same weight for three days, which is fine. You know, a lot of people have those kinds of things happen, which is totally cool. Like I'm good with it. I know I have a long way to go. Really cool arduous journey you guys are gonna get to witness and especially while I'm vlogging through this whole situation. Um, being morbidly obese, I'm sitting at like 320, 321. I've been kind of ping-ponging around in that weight bracket. Uh, BMI is sitting at the 54 range. I started at almost 58, so I'm feeling good. I'm walking better. I'm kind of feeling, you know, probably like 8 out of 10, you know, health-wise, which is a good thing because in February when I had my birthday, I legitimately felt like I was going to die. I legitimately felt like I was just gonna keel over and die one day, right? So, um, family drama. So this is what's happened in the last 72 hours of my life. Um, two people that are very close to me decided to, um, I like to use the word, bring a grenade to a sword fight. So they got into this minor altercation and they brought in some pretty hefty word grenades and now they're both very angry with each other and these two people are supposed to be going with me on this trip to Mexico to go get my surgery so now here I am trying to play you know nobody's side but at the same time trying to get this whole thing sorted out so that everybody that's going in this group down to Mexico is and are happy campers. I will let you guys know I did make a video of my meltdown yesterday um, just explaining my thoughts. I will post that video um, on my surgery video. So when I do end up posting the video, when I get down to Tijuana and I come back, I will put together a nice pretty video for all of you, you know, kind of detailing the ups and downs of me getting ready for surgery and then getting the surgery and coming back to the States. So that's definitely one thing that I'm excited to share with you, and I swear you not. If I use the word I am excited one more time, I want you guys to slap me via camera. So that's been my conundrum for the last 72 hours. My weight has been stalled, but goose fraba. I'm gonna be okay. I'm a champion. I will make it through this. I have had to literally peel myself out of bed and tell myself that in the morning. Sorry, I'm getting hair everywhere. Woo. Just to get through the day. So it's just definitely been its own conundrum for sure. Also, I do want to point out my eyebrows look like nightmares right now. Like nightmares. Like this thing looks like I've got like caterpillars growing on my face. So I apologize in advance. I don't care because I do my makeup however, but today I was going to try this like Kylie Jenner thing, but clearly this was like a makeup fail, but hey, it's me. I'm gonna be me and you guys are gonna get to see my ups and downs regardless. So I wanted to at least let you guys know that uh, I'm completely aware of my makeup fail. I'm gonna live with it. 
move on. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about the pre-op diet. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna pull this paper so that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I wanted to run through it. So I got this manual from the tourism company and I'm trying not to show the name, but I got the manual from the tourism company and it basically gives me my pre and post-op diets. As you guys also can see, it's pretty long. You know, you look at this and it's like, also in big letters for those of us who don't have the ability to read. But, <laughs> excuse me. So I wanted to talk about what it says I need to do. And I'm just going to go through the basics. So I'm going to go through um, literally what I can eat 20 days before gastric bypass. One is protein shakes, water, electrolytes, diet jello, sugar-free yogurt, or light yogurt, light yogurt. You know what I'm talking about, like that yo business. Um, I can have vegetable juice, and you guys know the brand. And then also it says soups, broth, like vegetable, chicken, and beef. And then light juice, which I'm assuming is like low calorie, sugar-free juice. I'm still gonna have to get online and do a little bit of research. And then I can have that 20 days before surgery. And then it gives me this cute little detail about, you know, what time Miss Rinda has to eat these things because we have to time these things, you know. Uh, once you go through gastric bypass surgery, you really have to be careful about your hydration. And so they want you to get into the habit of doing said activities prior to going into surgery so you're not absolutely in shock once you're done being in shock from having your innards cut open and dissected. So with that being said, moving on. Two days before surgery, I get to go on a clear liquid diet. Yay, as if confining myself to semi-solids for 20 days was bad enough. So two days before surgery, clear liquids only. This is gonna be beef, vegetable, and chicken broth, water, electrolytes, light jello. There's an asterisk here. The following foods can be consumed on demand. Okay, I have no idea what that means. Again, I'm gonna have to figure it out. I'm kinda winging this. So, uh, decaffeinated tea, and then sugar-free clear juice, no pulp. And I have to restrict that to four cups a day. And then it says sugar-free popsicle, only two pieces per day. So obviously they really want me to get off that aspartame, right? Or aspartame? I think it's aspartame or aspartame. Moving forward, I apologize in advance with what's going on here. My roommate sounds like he's bumping on his way in the garage. After the diet, we'll talk about that later. But they said avoid cough drops, avoid breath mints, avoid anything with excess sugar. I found out also I'm going to be spending, because of my high BMI, an extra day in the hospital. Do you guys hear that? Sounds like he crashed. Moving on. So I'm going to spend my first night in the hotel. Obviously, they have to do my, my pre-surgery probably like with the normal metabolism, a bob or whatever you want to call it. They have to do that. And then from what I understand, I get to go into the hospital the next day and they're going to do like the pre-pre or second part of the pre-surgery tests and so on and so forth. Make sure I'm safe to have surgery. I'm really crossing my fingers. I don't have any complications. So um, I'm going to get to spend that extra day in the hospital. I thought I was going to at least have one day where I got to, you know, after surgery, walk around and actually enjoy being out of the country, but clearly not. So that was pretty cool. Um, one other thing that I was, am really concerned about, if you guys can tell, my hair goes down to my elbows. Well, obviously, I'm like up here like this, but my hair goes down to my elbows. And I'm really concerned. You guys are gonna have to excuse me. He's probably gonna walk in here in a minute, but it's okay. Um, I'm really concerned about losing my hair. And from what I've been reading on forums and reading online is that it's a real thing. Apparently somewhere between four and six months after you get surgery, your hair starts falling out. And I've heard so many people say, I was trying to keep it from happening and my hair fell out and they ended up cutting it off, but it grows back and I am not prepared 
to have something like that happen. I don't know about you guys. I could have the caterpillar eyebrows, but lose this hair. I have been trying for years to get this hair growing out. So now I'm gonna have to worry about my hair falling out. But I did learn from research that I can do like um, vegetarian digestive enzymes, and then I can also do things like biotin, but obviously not right away. Garage doors closing. Of course, the timing is gonna be perfect. Um, I can also check for low iron too. That's something that I struggled with back when I was a vegetarian in my early 20s. And then they want to also try one to two grams of L-lysine. Still haven't figured out where the heck you buy any of this stuff. That's gonna be for after surgery. And then they also said you need to eat at least 800 calories a day. These are just things that I found randomly on the interweb and in random forums. So that was kind of a cool deal. Um, the last thing, and this is the last big stress that I kind of have going on in my life, is my BMI. And I have a big booty. I'm not going to tell any lies. I have posted pictures on my Instagram of my body with my shirt down so that you guys can see the kind of stomach I'm rolling with. But I also have a super big booty. And I learned that the particular airline that I am flying on happens to be one of the sticklers when it comes to heavy being overweight people. So... I've learned that um, I was actually so concerned yesterday that I was going to get booted from the plane that I called the airline and I explained to this woman in borderline tears that I thought I was too big to ride in the seat. And I posted, I even went as far as posting in um, other bariatric groups and all sorts of crazy places just to see, because the last thing that you want to deal with as a big girl or a big person in general is getting onto an airplane and having the airplane be like, mm, by the way, your booty too big, time to go, right? So I was super concerned about that. I called this gal and I said, I really got to be honest with you. I'm a big girl. I need to know how big your seats are because I don't want to you know, suffer the embarrassment of getting on this airplane and having, and having the flight attendant be like, um, miss, we're going to have to have you try another flight with two seats. So um, I did measure the planes and I found that the average regular coach seat, I am flying first class on the way home because obviously I'm going to be a blimpy mess. But on the way there, I'm flying coach and coach seats are going to be 17 inches wide. And I actually last night went as far as measuring out on one of my dining room chairs exactly what 17 inches was and then I felt my butt like I was like rubbing my hands underneath my butt to make sure that I wasn't pouring out too far on either side and sure enough I text my dad I text um I text people in the the weight loss forums on uh Facebook and sure enough they were like half of them were like yeah you need two seats the other half were like no you're just fine I know somebody that weighed more than you it's gonna call it good so we'll see. I'm going to see how I feel. And honestly, I'm going to end up buying a seatbelt extender probably here um, in the next week or so just to make sure I have the seatbelt extender because the last thing that I want to deal with is not having the proper equipment to actually get on the plane and get moving. So that's that was my conundrum. So go ahead and add that on to life stress, add that on to work stress, add that on to stress stress. And now we know why I'm not losing any weight. Cortisol levels are through the roof. So I'm going to focus hard. This is my next action plan on making sure that I maintain my stress levels and kind of get things rocking and rolling in my mind so that my heart, my body, and soul are all just kind of in sync with each other for right now. I Like I said, I have my meltdown videos and I'm really excited. I said it. I said excited, you guys. You have no idea. Okay. I am ecstatic. We'll use ecstatic right now to share all of my meltdowns and every array of thought process that's gone through my head. But that's all going to come out in the actual surgery video once I get back from surgery in May. Between now and then, I'm going to post intermittently, let you guys know how things are going, check in with you. I definitely plan on posting a video after I get done uh, buying all my food for my pre-op so I can share it with you. But... Stay tuned. I'm really excited. I said it. Excited. I told myself not to. And what did I do twice now? So ecstatic, excited, emotional. I don't know what to tell you guys, but I will keep you guys informed. Make sure you like and subscribe. Stay tuned because I am prepared to share 
every piece of this with you. Take care and have a good day.